here's what's going on. Hurricane warnings are up from now Cape Romaine. This has been extended a little further to the south. Cape Romaine in South Carolina all the way up through Chincoteague in Virginia. So all the North Carolina coastline and the, certainly the northern half of the South Carolina coastline. All the latest numbers, we have all that for you and uh, we'll plot that in just a moment. Again, there she goes kind of spinning towards the Carolina coastline tonight. It's a huge storm. Again, as I said, it's about the size of North and South Carolina put together. So uh, even if the eye comes ashore, say around Wilmington, you've still got to deal with it to the North and South of that. We have a graphic to show you that in just a moment. Here are the latest numbers from the Hurricane Center as of 11 o'clock. And if you're plotting at home, those are the coordinates. Winds still about the same, 115 miles per hour. That's a, those are sustained winds. They're certainly gust up above that. And it's moving to the north-northwest at 14 miles per hour. And uh, the location right now about 215 miles south of Cape Lookout, which is out near Hatteras. We are also watching Hurricane Danielle, 85 mile per hour winds. We will deal with that though tomorrow. So say the hurricane comes ashore right around Wilmington. That is our most likely target. Uh, to 145 miles to the south of that, 145 miles to the north of that, that will all be experiencing potential hurricane force winds of over 74 miles per hour. And some of those winds certainly uh, well over 100 miles per hour. So this is a huge area of real estate that the hurricane will be covering. And that's certainly a concern for us tonight. Strike probabilities, this is the most likely strike area. And here are the numbers as of 11 o'clock. We feel like Wilmington is the most likely strike area with 56% assigned to that, 51% Myrtle Beach and 52% for Moorhead City. And this is where we're talking about the eye coming ashore. But keep in mind, it's a huge hurricane and it will be covering pretty much all of this area regardless. Will it turn away at this point? It doesn't look like it. It is certainly moving in. We see the feeder bands already through the eastern parts of the Carolinas and certainly the main part of the storm not too far offshore. So the tides are going to be going up and we will see some astronomically high tides and some flooding problems certainly along the coast this evening. Here's where Jack is about right here. And again, just a couple of raindrops hitting them earlier on. Here is the heavier stuff though and that is just beginning to move closer to the South Carolina coastline already along the Outer Banks pretty much covered with heavy rain at the moment. Here in the upstate, we really don't think we're going to see a major effect from this storm. High pressure is going to break down. The eye of the storm should move in around noon tomorrow, but the heavy hurricane winds will start probably around daybreak tomorrow morning and tropical storm winds overnight tonight. In the Western Carolinas, we may see some showers from these outer bands of the hurricane. We think it'll stay pretty much in the eastern part of North Carolina. If it does come further in, obviously we could see some heavier rain and some higher winds. We think this system, the frontal system, will help push all this out to back out into the Atlantic as we get into Tuesday. Obviously the hurricane will be weakening while it's over land and it will probably be only a tropical storm or maybe just an area of low pressure as it exits the uh, Virginia coastline and heads up to the northeast. We'll be mostly sunny, we think, as we get into the end of the work week. So where we are at this point, it doesn't look like a major concern, but certainly around the coast, it is a very deadly situation. Here's your Doppler 7 forecast overnight tonight for the upstate of South Carolina. Mainly clear skies, 69 in the upstate for the mountains down to around 65. For tomorrow, partly cloudy skies, a chance of some showers. Again, join Tony Dale first thing in the morning. He'll have the very latest on that, 95. Another hot day ahead, hot and humid tomorrow. And pretty much dry it looks like for Thursday and Friday may see some showers as we get into the weekend. For the mountains, for tomorrow around 91 degrees, a hot humid day, may see some showers. Again, this could change greatly depending on the exact track of the storm. But right now we think it's gonna stay very much in the eastern Carolinas, moderate ozone levels for tomorrow. So Jack Roper will be at the coast and we'll right. be with them off and on as conditions permit, I guess at this point, and they'll be hopefully taken care overnight tonight. Jim Kirkpatrick, tell us about this hurricane and all the other events in the area. Well, uh, it was almost nothing yesterday, just a tropical wave, then it became a tropical storm, and now it is a full-fledged hurricane. Aaron, and it is moving towards Florida and will likely have already struck Fl southern Florida by this time tomorrow night. So it certainly uh, bears watching, couldn't make a turn, but right now looks like it is headed towards southern Florida. We've seen a few showers and thunderstorms move through the afternoon, and some even this evening, they have tapered off now, and there's really just nothing left up there isolated shower that would be about it temperatures will be about where they have been for the last few nights mid 60s in the mountains to about 70 in the upstate full forecast and the latest on hurricane Aaron in just a few minutes
It is headed nowhere, unfortunately. We just got the numbers in from the Hurricane Center. It is now 20 miles east to southeast of Wilmington and is nearly stationary. That is about the worst possible news they could get in eastern North Carolina. You want this to move on through. This is dumping heavy rains. Already some areas have seen over six inches of rain. Some areas may see 12 inches of rain. And some areas, if this thing persists all night, which it looks like it may, may receive over 20 inches of rain. The center, of course, just about right here near Wilmington, but it still hasn't even made it to Wilmington. And we've been watching it move slowly north and then stall and then move a little further north. But right now, and over the last couple hours, it has moved virtually none. To the south of it, it is mainly lighter showers in the South Carolina coastline. As you get into North Carolina, still some strong thunderstorms and then some severe weather as you get on up into parts of eastern North Carolina. We have had reports of some possible tornadoes there. Of course, uh, just tons of rain, and this just continues to spin around. And it is still a huge storm. Wind are down just a little bit now at 100 miles per hour. So instead of a Category 3 hurricane, it is now a Category 2 hurricane. It generally, of course, they do weaken once they get over land, but it's still a major rainmaker. It is going to cause major flooding in eastern North Carolina. Also, the storm surge tonight, 9 to 11 feet above astronomical high tides. So they are looking at a bad night in eastern North Carolina tonight. And with the storm not moving, they don't have a whole lot of hope of things getting up much better anytime soon. So this could be out there for another 24 hours, we think it will resume some trek to the uh, north northeast overnight tonight. And notice Western Carolina is nothing going on. Now earlier there were a couple thunderstorms uh, around the Tennessee border. Those moved down through Buncombe County and then kind of died out. So we'll have uh, more and we'll plot it all for you coming up in a few minutes. But uh, certainly not a good night in eastern North Carolina. South Carolina, really not too bad. On Florida tonight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Our heat index and the upset got up to 99. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So a little steamy once again. Mm -hmm. But all eyes now turn to Florida as they brace for what is now a hurricane, Hurricane Aaron. And if you think about it, it really developed overnight. Sunday, it was just a minimal tropical wave. Then 11 o'clock last night, it did become a hurricane. So the Bahamas had almost no warning with this system. And Florida has only had about 36 hours. So short notice on this one. Let's get to it. Greenville Spartanburg. It's currently uh, partly sunny, 88 degrees, relative humidity, 54%. The dew point's about 70, so it feels a little uncomfortable again today. The winds are out of the southeast at 10 miles per hour. A steady barometer at 3007, 93. The official high this afternoon and 71 last night. At the Anderson Airport, it's 89 degrees. Uh, 93 was the high this afternoon as well, the low 69. Some of the outlying areas did get into the upper 90s again today. And at the Asheville Airport, partly sunny, 83, the high today, 85, not too far from normal actually for Asheville, and 63 the low this morning. Take a look at a regional radar picture and watch the thunderstorms develop over the mountains and into the uh, upstate late this afternoon. Pretty much northern Greenville, northern Lawrence County, Oconee and Pickens County, you are seeing thunderstorms. Then you go into North Carolina, up around Rutherford, Polk and uh, southern part of Henderson County now seeing some thunderstorms and over towards Transylvania. Then a break and then more widespread thunderstorms across the Tennessee border. And again today they're moving from east to west. So still that chance of thunderstorms for all of us through the evening. The atmosphere is a little bit unstable and thunderstorms can develop. Watch the two tropical systems. One over Texas and the hurricane Aaron moving into Florida and already the clouds are over Florida and notice the northern part of those clouds already up into Wilmington so we could see a little bit of moisture out of this and certainly some clouds by tomorrow afternoon with the hurricane but I think most of the moisture should stay to the south a lot of moisture with this across the plain states some flooding problems continuing in Texas and some of the rain is already falling in Florida and the uh, hurricane warnings are up. There are the latest. Hurricane Aaron is moving west, northwest at 14 miles per hour. There are your coordinates. Winds are at 85 miles per hour. It, now it looks like the most likely strike area will be between West Palm and Daytona Beach and that should, the eye should move ashore around early tomorrow morning. Uh, flooding rains possible and maybe a few tornadoes as well. So here's the setup. High pressure offshore, kind of moist and unstable atmosphere for us. Thunderstorms a possibility. I think pretty much the same thing for tomorrow with all this staying to our south, but we could see some squalls even into the upstate for tomorrow. We do, in fact, need the rain. This will reemerge back in uh, the Gulf by late tomorrow night, early uh, Thursday, and then where it goes, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but probably Louisiana, Alabama, somewhere around there. Your forecast overnight tonight, partly cloudy, some isolated thunderstorms. Some of them, again, can be heavy, about 69 degrees in the upstate. For the mountains, scattered thunderstorms, 65 degrees, maybe some fog overnight as well. For tomorrow, partly cloudy, some scattered thunderstorms. We could see some squalls for the hurricane late tomorrow afternoon. We'll keep you posted right here on the news channel. About 90 in the upstate, 86. Should be a little cooler by Thursday. Sun, scattered thunderstorms, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday looks like just those afternoon and evening thunderstorms near 90 degrees in the upstate with 80s 
in the mountains. But keep in mind, things could change if the hurricane takes a more northerly track. But right now, it looks like everything should stay to our south. So we'll see how it works out. But you never can yeah, tell yeah, about never those can. hurricanes and yeah. the remnants where they're going to go. Yeah, that's right. They got suited up uh -oh. for a six-story high bungee jump. They tell me as many as 200 people a day jump during the summer. I uh, had to walk up all those stairs. That was the toughest part. Then a uh, <laughs> little apprehensive right there as you take that first step, but it's a great feeling uh, once you go. Now yeah, they have big that. airbags under there, so it's really, I guess, uh, relatively safe and lots of fun. So, okay, <laughs> things are beginning to change. A mackerel sky last night.